Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're good. As you can see from the title of this video, I'm going to be showing you the best free Oculus Quest games available right now. Now you will see there are quite a few free apps, but not very many of them are games. A lot of them are video apps and kind of experiences, which are also really awesome, but we're just focusing on games today. So I'm going to show you five free games available right now. Watch to the end of this video because the last game is by far the best. In fact, it's the best Oculus Quest quest app or game I've ever played and it's free free I'm gonna be going through I'm gonna be showing you some gameplay and also just discussing what the game is like and what it's about so let's go the first game in our lineup of free Oculus Quest games is Mission ISS. Now this is essentially a realistic simulation of the International Space Station. It was developed along with NASA, the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency. Now that you know the layout of the station and how to move in space, you are ready to go to work. Proceed to the Destiny module. We'd like to explain the laboratory in more detail. I really love this game. It's more of a simulation of the International Space Station. I love it because I've always loved space. I've always loved the idea of being an astronaut. And I love the International Space Station. I think it's an amazing accomplishment. And this is a realistic recreation of what it's actually like up there. You can explore the station, all of its modules. You can use some of the equipment. But there are videos embedded in certain areas so you can learn about how the equipment is used in real life. There are interviews with some astronauts that have been up there. There are some missions that you can complete. For example, you can go on a spacewalk. You can do some repairs of the station. You can use the robotic arm to dock with a incoming spacecraft. Now, some of these are quite difficult. They've tried to make the simulation as realistic as possible. For example, using that robotic arm was really difficult for me. It took me like half an hour to get it right. And it is something that I really wanted to do so I took my time and eventually got there in the end. Alright, capsule lock is confirmed. So you're gonna get like a few hours out of this game maximum. If you're really into space then you will enjoy this game. If you like engineering and technology again you'll be into this. It's really interesting to learn about what life is like up there and I think this is an awesome use of VR to really give people that experience. This is the best way you're gonna ever experience being in the International Space Station and seeing what it's like as close to reality as possible. The physics of the game are also quite interesting. I mean they try and replicate the zero gravity environment so you do have to drag yourself along long like a real astronaut would you will float around you will see other objects floating around when you throw them they will float like they do in real life in the space station so i really like how accurate they've tried to make this game as a free experience you should definitely download mission iss you'll learn something new and you'll have a great time exploring this amazing structure The next free game is called Half Half, which is a very interesting, if not quite strange, multiplayer experience which allows you to explore different worlds, either alone or with other people. There are five different worlds which you can experience. Each of them is kind of like a different game. There's one where you swim around, there's one you play hide and seek, there's a human Tetris game and a few others. Each of them are kind of modelled on Japanese cartoons, so the environment is very unusual. The music playing in the background is very relaxing. You play as these weird creatures which kind of move their arms around and their bodies, and that is how you communicate. There is no voice communication, there's no way of ta talking to other people. You can only communicate with your body movements. So this is kind of a weird social experiment, I think it was described as, when it was released. It used to cost $15, now it is free. Each of the experiences are quite short, they're not particularly difficult. You will only get a couple of hours maximum out of this game, but I think it would be perfect for children. I think it would be perfect for people who are just getting started with VR, maybe one of the first VR apps you wanted to download because it's super easy, it's super relaxing, there's no jump scares, there's nothing that's gonna make anyone scared of VR playing this game. It's for someone who's new to VR, this would be a great demo. The environment is really beautiful. You can tell the developers put a lot of effort into making this a really relaxing, really unique environment. My favourite game is the hide and seek one. I've still not entirely worked out how it is played. However, it's just interesting to walk around these environments and use these weird body movements to interact with the VR world.
Next up is a game called Bogo. Now, I don't know if anyone here is old enough to have played with Tamagotchis when they were younger, but this is essentially the VR version of that. Bogo is a little creature, a little animal that you've got to take care of. You feed him, you clean him, you play with him, and you essentially keep him happy, much like we did with our Tamagotchis when we were younger, but this is a much more advanced version. Now, this, again, is a game that is perfect for kids, for someone who wanted to just get started in VR. Bogo's quite a cute little creature and you are kind of compelled to take care of him the designers the creators of this game really did go to some effort to make this a little cute creature there isn't a huge amount to do again this is more like a demo of, if anything you might get an hour out of this maximum to be honest as you play with the creature the world develops around you so things come out of the ground fireworks come out of the sky i mean there's this whole little storyline that goes along as long as you take care of the little creature properly there are some mini games that you can play with Bogo. There's a fetch game. There is a game where you have to keep these bubbles off of the ground. So you're kind of moving around and the little animal helps you do that. There are a few other mini games as well. So this is a very simple game, which um, is perfect for kids. I think this will be something that I would show a child if they wanted to get involved in VR. And you didn't want them to be too scared. You didn't want them to um, react badly to it. This is going to be a very simple game. That's not going to be scary at all. But for anyone who's had more experience in VR, you're probably going to get bored of this quite quickly. For a free experience, you can't really complain though, so I do recommend you download it and give it a shot. Next up is one of the weirdest, most trippiest experiences I've ever had on any VR headset. It's called The Under Presents. This is a collaboration between a VR developer and a theater in New York to deliver a multiplayer, live performance and single player experience. So there's quite a lot to do on this game. It's more like an immersive theater experience. So there is a free element. The single player is a free element of this game where you are taken along this narrative with a strange narrator which takes you through this abandoned ship. No one much cares about these old vestiges at the moment. Their heyday will return in time. A new renaissance, if you will. In fact, you can think of this jaunt as the VIP treatment. There's some mysteries you have to solve, some puzzles you have to solve, and all in all, it was just a very strange experience. The world is very trippy. The narrator is quite, you know, weird as well. I mean, I found it very interesting. Once I got started, I really couldn't stop. There is a story that develops, and I think it's really interesting. I really like how the movement in this game is done. Usually movement is one of the things that most games and experiences struggle with in VR. It can even create some nausea if it's not done properly. But in this experience, you kind of drag yourself along with these long elongated fingers and the world kind of warps around you. I find it to be very satisfying. So I like how movement is handled in this game. There is also a paid element where you can pay to watch some theater shows, some live performances. And these are actually done with people around the world, with actual actors performing wherever they are around around the world in this VR environment. That is a paid thing and there are scheduled performances which you can choose to do or not to do. But if you are just interested in the free aspect, it's still worth downloading because this single player is so, I can't stress how strange it is. It's really one of the most strangest VR experiences I've had, but it really does push the boundaries of what is possible in VR. And I think it's definitely, definitely worth downloading. I looked at the reviews before I downloaded this and loads of people were saying that this is one of their favorite VR experiences ever, just because it's so unique. So definitely give it a shot if you're into something like that. It's definitely quite relaxing. There's not much that's gonna challenge you or you're not gonna be moving around that much, but it's definitely worth the experience. Looking for a little entertainment? The lovely sashimi trio. A venue outside of time and space. May I present the under? Now, I said that the last game on my list would be the best, and I am not lying. This next game, I really can't believe it's actually free. It's called Echo VR, and the best way to describe it is a mix between Ultimate Frisbee and Rocket League, that football car playing game that's been popular on the PS4 for quite some time. This is kind of a mix between that and also in VR. Essentially, what this game is, is a team-based game where you have to get a disc into the other team's goal, and you're in this arena, which 
which you can explore via your jetpacks that are on your wrists. It's kind of like an anti-gravity environment, so there's zero gravity you float around and you grab onto the environment, you use these jetpacks on your wrists, you can use boosters to zoom along yeah, in this yeah. arena and basically fight the other team, get the disc into the other team's goal. Okay. You can disable players by punching them, you can shield yourself from other players punching you, you can pass the disc to other players, you can communicate with them, it's quite a social game, there is a social aspect to the game where you use your microphone to communicate with your team players, to plan things, to tell them to pass it, it's essentially like any other sport that i played, apart from you're in this VR world. There's this big tutorial which I do recommend you use because the movement in this game can be quite complicated. There are a lot of elements that you need to know about how to grab things, about how to move around, about how to pass, to throw. It is a little bit complicated at first, but guarantee you after one or two games you will be competing um, on a reasonable level. It is quite difficult. There are some very good players. I mean, I've been playing this for hours at a time now. This is probably my favorite ever Oculus Quest game. I've been playing it for hours and I'm still pretty average. There are some people that are really good, but I've scored a few goals, so I'm happy with that. This is a game where you're gonna need quite a lot of space to play because you do get so immersed in the action and you so wanna win and you wanna do your teammates well that you forget that in reality you're moving around in a real room. I have punched the wall probably three times playing this game because I'm in quite a small room, so I am going to migrate to a slightly bigger space to play this game. I also sometimes play sitting down on a spinny chair. I find that to be a little bit more safe, maybe slightly restrictive, but you are at least not gonna break anything. This is actually one of the only games where I've bothered to actually speak to other people, use the social aspect. Before each game you're kind of in this loading phase or this loading arena where you wait to join a game. You can communicate with people there as well, you can practice. People have taught me how to play this game in this area just by telling me how to throw, throwing things to me and telling me how to, you know, return it. So it's been quite friendly. Everyone there has been really cool. One of the downsides to the social aspect, and I know that there are some young people who view my channel, so don't take this the wrong way, but there are quite a lot of kids that play this game and they can be a little bit annoying on the old microphone. Oh no, okay. <laughs> Now this isn't too much of an issue because you can <laughs> mute them, you can mute yourself, you don't have to communicate with people if you don't want to, you can just play the game without listening to anyone else. Or have, having people listening to you. So yes, Echo VR is definitely my favourite game on the Oculus Quest by some margin to be honest, I've become quite addicted to it. And it is completely free. However, it may not remain free forever because at the moment it is in beta. I think they have released it just to get as many people playing it as possible. I'm fairly sure once the game is fully released, they're going to charge for it. So if you want to play Echo VR for free, then I recommend you download it pretty quickly and get started because I have no idea how long it's going to be free for. Now a quick shout out to one more free app in the Oculus Quest store. It's called Big Screen. It's not a game, so which is why I'm just doing a quick shout out, but basically it simulates a cinema experience. There are scheduled movies that you can watch. You have to be there at a certain time to watch these movies. There is a social element where you sit with other people around the world and watch the movie together. You don't have to talk to them necessarily, but it is quite an interesting app. All of the movies, or at least most of them, are in 3D. Now if you didn't know, 3D actually looks really good when you view it on a VR headset. I hate 3D movies in cinemas because usually you're not in the right place, sometimes gives you a headache and usually just doesn't look that good. But on a VR headset, 3D movies look perfect every time. It's like being in an IMAX experience. As well as movies, there are even TV shows. You can watch TV channels. It, again, in this big screen, it literally feels like you're in a cinema watching a huge screen. I've watched things like Naruto, Star Trek, some comedy channels that are National Geographic. There are so many channels available which you can sit down and watch either on your own or with other people. I think this is a really cool free app. I again don't know if it's gonna be free forever. You do have to pay for some of the movies, but most of it is free. So I definitely recommend downloading that if you'd like to watch media on your VR headset. 
Okay guys, so that's it. Those are my top three Oculus Quest games. I uh, don't know what you think. I think there's something there for everyone, especially Echo VR, like I just mentioned. It is by far my favorite free Oculus Quest game. In fact, it might be my favorite Oculus Quest game bar anything. I don't know how long it's gonna be free for. Like I said, it's in beta mode right now. It is free at the moment. So if you are thinking of getting a Quest or you have one now, download it quickly. Um, I don't know how long it's gonna be free for. I'm pretty sure they're gonna start charging for it once it's fully done. I will also say that while there aren't that many free games, most of the games on the Quest are relatively cheap. I mean, we can expect these days to pay 60, 70, 80 dollars for a full PS4 or Xbox, uh, Xbox One game, whereas Oculus Quest games, usually between around about 15 dollars, 15 pounds to 20, like that's probably the average, so reasonably good price, although they're not nearly as long or as big. If you want to know anything else about the Quest, check out my recent review. I did a full review on the Quest. I will probably be creating some more content on the Quest in the next few weeks, so stay tuned and subscribe if you want to see that. And yeah, let me know if you have any particular questions or want me to try any particular games or apps, and I will certainly do so. But until next time, I will see you around. Bye.